Good morning. Welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. I am Jim Miller along with Deacon Helen Ballou. We have the honor of leading you in worship this day to all who are joining us online and to all who have gathered here. Welcome. A special word of welcome to our first time guests. We are so honored that you are here and again we pray it's the first of many Sunday mornings that we spend together. So those of you who have joined us in person, we invite you to please sign the registration pad and pass that along to the person beside you. And online, if you just take a moment and put your name in the chat, we so appreciate your being here. I love that prelude. Morning by morning, God is present for us and to, on this Sabbath day, to offer our presence unto God in worship and in thanksgiving. Welcome to our service. I'd like to share a couple of things that are happening in the life of the church. We are the season of Advent is not far away. You saw several of the announcements, and please consider yourself invited to all of these special gatherings. There's also some special ministries taking place, for example, right here in the city with the Gaithersburg Holiday Giving Program. We've known it at Grace here for years as Share Your Love. We even have the scan code up there that you can use. This is a way where our financial gifts can help in the city of Gaithersburg, reaching out to those who are in need, both with the Thanksgiving food and with Christmas gifts. And so we join with fellow those citizens of Gaithersburg and community in helping those who are in need. So this is one way that you can provide assistance. And just I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to join our city leaders in helping others. Now this goes along, of course, with our angel tree, our hat and mitten tree, and all the wonderful ministries that are taking place in this season. We invite you to please visit our website, and you'll be learning more details as these days rapidly approach. We pause this morning to give thanks for some very dear members of the life of our congregation. We are giving thanks for the life of Norma Barr. Norma passed away this past week, and so this white rose on our Altars in loving memory of Norma, let us be keeping her family in prayers. We don't have any announcement at this time in regard to services, but please let us keep our prayers going. Also for Paul and Angie and all the Baumgarten family, the celebration of Gary Baumgarten's life will be this afternoon at 2 p.m. at Butler's Orchard. And uh, so we are just so thankful. Our, our men's group took time yesterday to just reflect on Gary and his presence and example in serving. And so we giving thanks and have much to celebrate as we think about Gary's life and ministry here amongst us at Grace. And so as we pray for one another, as we gather this day, we are reminded of the importance to keep that oil in our lamp, that we are prepared to serve God day in and day out. And it is our prayer that through this time of worship, each of us will be drawn closer to God and one another, and our hunger for God will in fact increase. Welcome to our service. This time, Deacon Helen will lead us in our call to worship. The time for harvest is close at hand. What have you done with the gifts God has given you? We have brought our gifts to the house of the Lord. Praise God for the gifts and for opportunities for service that they represent. We praise God for all the ways in which our lives have been blessed. Generous God, accept our gifts and our lives this day. Loving God, accept our praise and our gratitude. Let us pray. Your love has brought us together, O Lord. And it is your love that sustains us through each day. We pray that you would keep us faithful, even as we watch for signs of your kingdom. Strengthen us to work with you to bring about here and now your reign on earth. Give us the courage to witness to your presence in the world today, tomorrow, and into the future. We pray in the name of the one who comes, Christ our Savior. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able for hymn number 2036 in the faith we sing hymnal, Give Thanks.
this is why we have gathered to offer our thanks and praise to God. Please be seated. We have so much to be thankful for. The fact that we can gather in freedom and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, offer our praise in song and word, reflect on the scriptures, confess our sin. We do this because of the freedom we enjoy in this nation. And so as we have celebrated Veterans Day this weekend, we pause and give thanks for our veterans, to all who have gathered here and all joining us online, thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing as we uplift in prayer and think about all those who are serving, all those who are away from their families, communities, church communities, in order to offer the freedom that we have to experience. Truly, we give thanks for our veterans. Thank you. As we continue in this time, we have the opportunity now to offer our prayer of confession to be cleansed, that we may begin anew in our service to Christ. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we neglect to acknowledge you as God in our lives. We live like we have complete control over our own future. We forget that you created us and that we are the sheep of your pastor. We separate ourselves from the flock and abandon our bonds with one another as we try to do it all on our own. We have traded gratitude for individualism and thanksgiving for self-reliance. Forgive us, we pray. Free us to live as your grateful people. Receive the good news. God's steadfast love endures forever. While we were yet sinners, God made a way for us to return to God and to return to one another. By God's grace, we are a forgiven and reconciled people. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God is too great to keep to ourselves, so we take this time to exchange signs of peace with one another, whether it's through air hugs, fist bumps, handshakes, hugs. Let us just greet one another in sharing that peace, celebrating God's presence. The peace of the Lord be with you. How good it is to gather in the house of the Lord. We give thanks for all of God's children. We take this moment to 
give thanks for God's younger children. So we invite all our little ones and younger ones, if you would join me up front, please, for this morning's children's message. You're here already. Oh, wonderful. Good morning, good morning. Gather round, friends. Good to see you all. How's everybody doing this morning? Might help if I used a microphone, huh? Good morning. Good morning. Good to see. You. Hope everybody's doing well. Are you enjoying this time of year? I am too. What do you like about this season, this time of year? Just shout it out here. Food. food? I like food. Absolutely. You're thinking Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks, aren't you? Sure, indeed. We also had some good food at our coffee hour this morning, didn't we? Want to thank uh, uh, our book club who prepared that for us. Indeed, thank you. So we like the food. What else do you like about this time of year? The holidays are not far away, are they? No, very good. Coming up here, sure. Thanksgiving in just a, a couple of weeks here. So we are reminded by each time we gather how God is present for us. Now, I wanted to show you something. Do you see what I brought here today? Looks like a cut out of a flashlight, doesn't it, there? But you know what's cool about it? Look at that. It is a flashlight. Indeed. It's just a little thing. I borrowed this from my wife, who is a nurse. And so as they work the night shift, they find a flashlight as a gentle way to enter a patient's room to go in, whether it's for vital signs or to help without turning on a bright light and disturbing someone. So I was grateful to have this light because... We talk a little bit about this. Now, what I didn't plan on sharing with you, but was just this morning, involved light. I let our dogs out very early in the morning. And I did that this morning. We have a back porch light, but it's not working. I tried changing the light bulb. That didn't help. And that's as far as my electrical expertise goes. So I've put off calling an electrician. Well, I let them out, and there must have been a deer or something because they started to bark. And I knew my neighbors were not going to appreciate barking dogs early in the morning, so I made my way out and down the back porch steps, and I missed a step going down there. I caught myself, but uh, I know it happened, but it, it's better, and I was able to go out and uh, finished my run this morning, so that, that all worked out. But I learned in a painful way what happens when we sometimes put off doing something that we should have done. I thought about that with the Bible lesson we're looking at today. Uh, Jesus tells a story, a parable, where he talks about a bridegroom and the bridesmaids have gone out with oil lamps to welcome the bridegroom who is making this journey. Now, weddings were different then. This was late at night. Our weddings typically are the day, and if they're, they're outdoors, they're daylight. But uh, there they had lamps, not electric lights, but oil lamps to light the way. And that was fine, except the wedding didn't go off at the time it was supposed to. Now, I've done a few weddings, and I meant to ask Betsy, our organist, who has done more weddings than I, how often that's the case when weddings don't exactly start on time. Well, this one was especially delayed to the point when the bridegroom finally arrived, they went to light their oil lamps, and some discovered, half of them discovered, they didn't have enough oil for the lamp. They were in the position I was earlier this morning of needing a light and were not able to provide it. And so they missed out on the joy. So when we talk about whether it's electric lights, oil lamps, what Jesus was getting at is how we as Christians shine Christ's light in the world today. How we make sure that we ourselves are filled with his love. That we have that love to share with the world that so desperately needs it. Well, that's a major reason we gather. When we gather to worship and give thanks to God as we just sang, as we confess and offer our prayer of confession to God, we do so that God may fill us with God's love in such a way that we go out and we become that light. So somebody else you go to school with, 
or live there, or maybe lives in your own household, who is struggling, is hurting, we have the love and compassion of Christ to share with. So this day, we gather to be filled in order that we may shine a light that is greater than a flashlight, but the light of Christ's love shining through us. So today, before you go to your children's church and youth, you're going to stay right here. I'm going to turn to Miss Laura, who has a, an introduction for us today and concerning our, our nursery and our nursery workers. Good morning, Laura. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, as Pastor Jim was speaking of being the light and shining the light of Christ, um, it's my pleasure to introduce our new nursery staff who are doing just that with um, our youngest children here at Grace Church. Um, our nursery is for teeny tiny babies um, up to three years old, and then we move into our Sunday school classes, preschool onwards. But I'd like to introduce these three ladies here. Can I get you to stand up, ladies? Um, I'll let them introduce themselves. And... Um, when you see them walking around the church with little ones, say hi and uh, let people know that they're here and that they are, um, as I said, shining the light of Christ for our youngest members. Where's Vanessa? Hi, my name is Vanessa. I work here at the nursery. I'm Whitney. I work at the nursery. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Miss Lynn. I work at the nursery, too. Thank you, girls, and thank you for all you're doing for our little ones. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank you all. So our, our younger, oh, yes, I talked about being spiritually filled. Here's a little physical fruit snack to keep you energized as you stay in worship here, as you go forth. And, and we want to thank our nursery workers. So grateful for you. I watch our little ones. They can't wait to get there. They have so much fun with you all. Thank you for the care that you offer. You are dismissed at this time. Thank you all for coming up this morning. This time we invite all who are able to please stand as our gospel lesson is shared. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 to 3, 13. The parable of the ten bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us, and you had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him onto the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Please be seated.
friends, will you pray with me? Oh, Lord, may your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. We'll leave the light on for you. Do any of you remember that slogan from the Motel 6 commercials? <laughs> Maybe I got the wrong impression, but I always wondered if the clerk at the front desk left the light on because it got too late and he turned in for the night. In spite of that thought, I do find something welcoming about the way those words speak hope to weary travelers. Stop and rest. There is room for you. Yes, you. Come home. Inviting, including, offering care. Hospitality is all about getting ready to welcome neighbors, strangers, people who need a place to belong. Does this mean that the kingdom of God is like a late night motel with the light left on? Come on in. We've gone to sleep for the night, but help yourself to a key and find your own room. Somehow that doesn't ring true to our own experiences as guests or disciples, does it? Something, someone is missing. Hospitality is about more than leaving a light on for latecomers. A welcome is not a welcome at all if no one is there to greet you. Throughout the gospel accounts, hospitality is central to the ministry of Jesus. As he travels the highways and byways of towns and villages, fields and mountainsides, Jesus spends time as both a guest and a host. He encounters and engages with people who need food, healing, and relationships. Not only is Jesus aware of their needs, he anticipates them. He is on the lookout for them, and he is prepared to respond. Jesus welcomes and includes his neighbors in God's kingdom by caring for their physical, social, and spiritual well-being. The church of today practices hospitality like Jesus does when we notice the long-term cares and concerns of our local communities, when we wake up to new ways of going out and offering ourselves in response, when we live and serve and love in anticipation of the fulfillment of God's vision of abundant life for us, for our neighbors, and for all of creation. In today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells a parable about hospitality. He warns that faithful disciples need to be on the lookout and ready to welcome him as a neighbor and guest at any time. This story is found within a series of passages in which Jesus talks with his followers about the end of the present age the arrival of heaven on earth, his identity as Israel's long-awaited Messiah, and God's expectation that people of faith will go into the world to welcome and care for their neighbors who are hungry, sick, in need, or imprisoned. Through these conversations, Jesus makes it clear that practicing hospitality is far more than being friendly. It is the intentional act of reaching beyond ourselves to welcome and include others. Hospitality communicates our trust, our faith, our hope in a loving God who desires to be in relationship with all people. 
being prepared to welcome Jesus as Savior, as healer of the world, is connected with being prepared to welcome our neighbors. Hospitality is the key to God's kingdom. In the parable that Leo just read, a group of ten bridesmaids are getting ready for a wedding. They have a special mission, welcoming the groom and helping him get to the house where the festivities will take place. This team of enthusiastic greeters starts off strong. They venture out into the night, carrying oil lamps to light the way. The bridesmaids are expectant and hopeful, confident that the groom is coming. They don't just turn on a light for him, turn in for the evening, and expect him to find his own way there. Instead, they go forth to meet and greet their guest. They are ready to help make his way safely through the dark by bringing the light to him. Well, some of them are. Half of these greeters have planned ahead and taken the extra time and care to bring along flasks of oil. The rest have not. Surely the groom will show up before their lamps run out, right? The evening wears on, and the groom is nowhere to be seen. The bridesmaids grow tired and fall asleep on the job. What else is there to do? Midnight comes, and suddenly the man of the hour arrives. He's late, but he's here. The women wake up fumble around and try to relight their lamps. However, they have been waiting so long that they need to add more oil to them. The five bridesmaids who did not bring an extra supply are caught short. They realize their mistake and ask their companions for help. But the well-prepared bridesmaids do not have enough oil to share. So they tell their friends to go out and buy what they need instead. While these unfortunate women are out shopping, the groom comes near. The five bridesmaids who anticipated his late arrival and prepared accordingly welcome the opportunity to accompany him to the wedding banquet. They are the guests now and are invited inside. When the other women return from their errand, it is too late to join the party. The groom the guest of honor has become the host. He does not recognize these strangers. They were not around to welcome him, to light his way. They missed the opportunity for relationship because they were not present and prepared. The moral of the story is that citizens of God's kingdom are known by their abundant and generous welcome of others through their efforts God's hospitality, Christ's invitation, shines forth into a waiting world. Not only are faithful disciples ready, willing, and equipped to receive guests, they are prepared to take action and go the extra mile to care for them. They anticipate the needs of newcomers and go out to meet greet and walk beside them in ways that light their steps with hope. Have you ever experienced hospitality so gracious and surprising that there was no doubt about God's love? Has anyone ever come forth to meet you carrying Christ's everlasting light of hope? A mentor of mine welcomed me in this way and it changed my life. When I was 22, I moved from Northern Virginia to Illinois. My fiance had started graduate school there the year before. I planned to work a while and then apply to the library science program at the same university. Shortly after I transferred my job with a retail chain and moved to town, layoffs started. I applied to library school anyway. A few months later, I received an acceptance letter from the university. As I read through it, I was thrilled and then sad. 
I was no longer employed and would not be able to pay the tuition. Maybe I could try again next year. Later that same day, I got an unexpected phone call. Welcome to the university, the caller said. He was the director of the historical archives program at the university library. Tired of waiting for new graduate students to apply to his job openings, my mentor-to-be had gone to the admissions office and reviewed the files of recently admitted library school students with history degrees. He invited me to apply for a position as one of several archives assistants. At the end of my interview, he hired me. The pay took care of tuition with enough left over for room and board. What a blessing from God. How did the director of the archives practice hospitality? He reached out to welcome and include me. He made room for me at the university and invited me to learn his profession. My new mentor had anticipated the needs, concerns, and obstacles that incoming students faced, and he took steps to address them. He was prepared to care and reached out proactively. The scholar's actions gave me hope and a future. Through his abundant welcome, God made a way for my next steps in life. But there was more to my mentor's practice of hospitality. As I settled into my new position, I was surprised and grateful to notice that I was part of a diverse and inclusive team of coworkers. We spanned a broad range of ages and stages of life, represented different genders and sexualities, and came from a variety of backgrounds and hometowns. We all worked next to one another at one long, narrow workbench that spanned the entire room, side by side with our boss himself, who was a widely known, well-respected scholar in his field. There was equal room at his table for each one of us. We were included and valued. We were welcomed, along with the different gifts that we brought. My mentor, our mentor, helped us put them to use in our shared work together. The kingdom of God was like working in the archives. The significance of the director's hospitality became even more clear to me a few weeks after my first day at work. It was Sunday, and I had not yet found a church in my new hometown. I decided to visit the United Methodist Church several blocks up the street from my apartment building. As I walked into the church, I was welcomed and guided to the sanctuary by two kind men. To my great surprise, one of them was my new boss. Now I understood the meaning of his welcome. He put his faith into action by making room for new people in the church and in his workplace. Several months later, I became a United Methodist. Hospitality is about saying yes to God and to neighbor. Jesus teaches that we need to be ready to engage in new relationships and willing to look for God's image in others. Both hosts and guests practice hospitality together in mutual, equitable relationship. Just like the bridesmaids and the bridegroom in the parable, we alternate between these two roles throughout our lives. Sometimes we are better prepared than at other times to play our part in God's welcome. The act of making room for each other is sacred work that overcomes barriers of difference. It leads us into new places, understandings, and relationships. Hospitality does not begin and end with turning on a light, sitting back, and waiting. The next step is going out and taking action to share that light, that hope in God's love with others. I recently had the privilege of attending a conversation about Israel 
and the current war hosted by a Jewish congregation. The synagogue community was feeling alone, isolated by the deafening silence of their neighbors. So instead of waiting for others to come to them, they reached out to local churches and a mosque to invite them all to an opportunity to listen, learn, lament, and pray for peace. This Jewish congregation created a space to come together and be neighbors, to welcome and include one another in a new community as both hosts and guests, to engage in an exchange that reflected God's love. The Jewish congregation shared heartbreaking stories about their loved ones' daily lives in Israel as well as their own recent experiences with anti-Semitism in their own neighborhoods and schools. They invited their guests to share too, encouraging us to ask questions, exchange thoughts, and voice concerns. Both hosts and guests offered a variety of perspectives. It was uncomfortable at times, but also hopeful as we discovered a shared interest in standing together against hate and terrorism and keeping watch for God's love at work in our lives and in the world. Practicing hospitality is about becoming neighbors. According to the United Methodist Book of Resolutions, Engaging in dialogue with people of other faith traditions is one way to do this. A resolution titled Called to be Neighbors states that United Methodist Christians hear and respond to God's call to be neighbors with other faith communities and to work with them to create a human community, a set of relationships between people at once interdependent and free in which there is love, mutual respect, and justice. Dialogue is the intentional engagement with persons who hold other faith perspectives for purposes of mutual understanding, cooperation, and transformation. These words from the denomination invite hope and action. The practice of going out into the community to listen and learn, to care, to make room to welcome and include others in new relationships is how we say yes to our neighbors, how we love them like Jesus does. As we engage in acts of compassion and justice with the local community, our presence says we will do more than leave a light on. We will bring that light to you and walk together in it. We are ready to welcome. Amen. Amen. The opportunity to practice sacred hospitality as host, as guest, and to take and shine the light of Christ in the world. Thank you so much. We have that opportunity already as we now take this time to present our offering unto God.
let us pray. Holy Shepherd of all generations, we bring our gifts this morning with thanksgiving and praise. We present these tithes and offerings not from hearts of obligation or debt, but with the confidence and joy that through your love made incarnate in your Son, Jesus, you forever removed our debt. Our joy and gratitude are hard to contain. Use our gifts and our lives to do your work of compassion, mercy, and redemption. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Friends in Christ, let us pray. Great God of welcome, you invite all people into your community of grace and peace. We give thanks for your good gift of hospitality. Help us to welcome and include, to reach out and go out, to carry your light forth, and live as neighbors together with everyone we meet. Jesus, giver of hope, thank you for shining your healing love upon us and for calling us to share it with others. Help us to follow you into new places and spaces. We ask your blessing upon our acts of hospitality and as guests who bring gifts and as hosts who make room for others. Spirit, flame of faith, thank you for burning steady and bright in the center of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our beings. You never run out of oil. Grow us and guide us into relationships that embody and express your transforming presence. Help us to live in the world as your community of care. Help us to practice compassion and justice with all people. Holy One, our prayers are with Israel and Palestine, Ukraine and Russia, Pakistan and Afghanistan, Sudan, Niger, Haiti, Mexico, with nations around the globe caught in war, famine and disaster. Our prayers are with patients and care providers, people in crisis and first responders, with all who suffer, grieve, and seek healing. Our prayers are with veterans and all who protect and serve, with governments and citizens, leaders and communities, people of faith and people without faith. Our prayers are with newcomers and travelers, immigrants and refugees, people who are bullied, abused, excluded, or unseen, with all people who seek shelter, belonging, welcome. We prepare to welcome your love more and more into the world as we pray along with all of your saints across time and place. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand now for our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance, number 369 in the hymnals. I invite you to receive this benediction. As you prepare to cross the threshold from this place out into the world, and as you encounter doorways and thresholds throughout your week, repeat this blessing. May gratitude abound as I meet God and neighbor in this place. Amen.